This video is a review of the chapter on phase diagrams in chemical thermodynamics. So we have phase diagrams, which indicate as a function of pressure and temperature, what is the equilibrium or the lowest Gibbs energy phase for a given substance. So we typically have a diagram like this, where we graph the natural log of pressure versus temperature. And you have regions where the equilibrium phase is solid, where it's liquid, where it's gas. You also have regions where the solid and gas are in equilibrium, or solid liquid, liquid gas, called coexistence curves. And you have two special points called the triple point, where solid, liquid, and gas coexist, and the critical point, which is the highest temperature and highest pressure value where gas and liquid coexist before the fluid becomes supercritical. And the number of degrees of freedom, or the number of thermodynamic variables you can change without changing which phase of the diagram you're in, that number of degrees of freedom is equal to three minus number of phases which coexist at that point. So you have three, you have two degrees of freedom within a given phase, one degree of, co of freedom on a coexistence curve, and at a triple point or critical point, you have zero. Okay, for um, the various phases, as I said, the phase which exists is the one with the lowest Gibbs energy, and the Gibbs energy of a the molar Gibbs energy of a phase changes with respect to pressure based off of its molar volume. That is a positive. And it changes with respect to temperature based off of its negative molar entropy. So based off of that, based off the values of molar, and molar volume and molar entropy for each phase is what determines this diagram in which regions are which. So you have this <clears throat> behavior here where you have increasing pressure goes from gas to liquid to solid, and increasing temperature goes from solid to liquid to gas as your molar Gibbs energy changes. The quantity of interest often in phase diagrams is the chemical potential, which is the change in the Gibbs energy with respect to the number of particles in that phase at constant pressure and temperature. So the chemical potential is a function of temperature and pressure. If, if you're talking about just a single phase, it's just the molar Gibbs energy. But when we have multiple phases, um, these phases have to be in equilibrium with one another in order for in order for a coexistence to occur. So the, the chemical potential of solid and liquid are equal to one another at the solid-liquid coexistence curve. We then can define the equation that tells us how the pressure and temperature change with respect to one another along a coexistence curve, which comes from the Klopp-Iron equation. And it says that the change in pressure with respect to temperature along a coexistence curve is equal to the transition molar volume divided by the transition, sorry, transition molar entropy divided by the transition molar volume, which is the change in entropy going from the two phases and the change in volume going between the two phases. And that is equal to the enthalpy change of transition, the heat going from one phase to another, divided by the temperature of the transition times the molar volume change during the transition. The Clapiron equation assumes that your molar volume is going to be fairly constant throughout um, this phase change, so or throughout the phase diagram, which is fairly true for solids and liquids as their molar volumes are fairly fixed. But if you're going from solid to liquid or from liquid to gas, particularly, gases change molar volume a lot, even over fairly small ranges of temperature and pressure. So that gives us the clausius clapiron equation, which is for transitions from gas to another phase, particularly gas to liquid in this case. And it says that the natural log of pressure of the final pressure divided by the initial pressure is equal to the negative enthalpy change of vaporization, the heat of going from solid to liquid, divided by the gas constant, times 1 over final temperature minus 1 over initial temperature. So if you have, if you want to know where the pressure of the coexistence curve is going to be at some new temperature or vice versa, you can plot the natural log of pressure uh, versus 1 over temperature, and that should be a straight line. And the slope of this line, if we measure 
um, that where the coexistence curve, for example, where the boiling point is at two different pressures, um, that should be a straight line and the slope will be the negative enthalpy of vaporization divided by the gas constant. So if we actually measure the boiling point at two different pressures, we can plug that into the clausius klopiron equation, plot, one over, plot natural log of P versus 1 over T, and calculate what the enthalpy of vaporization is from those two different measurements. We can also calculate chemical potential from statistical mechanics, and that ends up becoming fairly straightforward. It's the negative uh, Boltzmann constant times temperature times the partial derivative of the natural log of the partition function with respect to number of moles, and then we can do some uh, linear transformations, and this is also equal to minus gas constant times temperature times partial derivative of, nat of natural log of Q with respect to number of particles because the Boltzmann constant, the gas constant is just the Boltzmann constant times Avogadro's number. The number of moles is just the number of particles divided by Avogadro's number. So those two values are just related by multiplying and dividing by Avogadro's number on each side.